And so, ladies and gentlemen, we go down, down the rabbit hole to Wonderland. So, here we are in Wonderland. Obviously a very kooky world, a better, a very uh, wacky world, a uh, wacky Wonderland. And uh, yeah, I'm actually recording this very late at night. Um, it is getting extremely cold around here, and I just got word that we might be getting a white Christmas. Now, of course, this video is being recorded before Christmas and will actually be uploaded after Christmas, so that's kind of a mute point by the time this gets uploaded, but yeah, I do hope that uh, we do get snow on Christmas. I love white Christmases. I love to wake up on Christmas morning to a nice layer of snow. Must you be so loud? You woke me up. Good morning. Good night. I need a bit more sleep. Wait, mm. what do we have to do to grow small? Why don't you try the bottle? Over there. Alright, so you may have noticed we did have to push in that bed there. Now, if you go ahead and you drink the uh, shrinking potion before you push the bed in, you have to fight a bunch of Heartless, and you won't be able to push it in because you'll be too small and it gets very annoying. So make sure you push that bed in before you drink the the uh, Shrinking Potion because, uh, yeah, it'll just save yourself a lot of trouble. A lot of time. Alright, so now that we're small, let's see if we can uh, talk to the doorknob again after we beat these Heartless. And, of course, the doorknob has to be quite lazy. Alright, so these enemies that we're fighting here are known as the uh, Red Nocturnes. And uh, that's quite a common enemy in Wonderland. So this is why I wanted the, uh, the fire rings that we got earlier back in uh, Traverse Town. To uh, give me some fire resistance, because we're definitely going to need it in this world. Not only are the uh, Red Nocturne's fire-based enemies, but also the main boss of this world is a fire-based enemy. So, fire rings are going to come in very, very handy here. Absolutely. So, thankfully, we were smart and got the bed out of the way before we shrunk down to the size of a mouse. Size of a Mickey Mouse, you could say. And uh, now we can proceed onward uh, through this pathway, and that's going to... Allow us to progress with the story. Yeah, we don't actually have to use the uh, doorknob. Now, the game doesn't tell you to push the bed in. Um, it doesn't tell you to not go through the doorknob, through the, you know, the actual doorway. So, first time players, I can imagine would have a, you know, a little bit of a difficulty figuring that out. Kingdom Hearts 1 is kind of known for that. Um, to where... You know, it's uh, it doesn't always explain to you what you need to do. It doesn't always, not even just explain it to you, but just give you hints. I kind of nudge in the right direction. Um, that was certainly a problem with the first Kingdom Hearts game. Not too much of a problem. Uh, but other games in the series do manage to uh, remedy that little issue. So, uh, speaking of issues, looks like Alice has got some issues. She's on trial with the Queen of Hearts. And, of course, if you've seen the movie Alice in Wonderland or read the book, uh, you know that the Queen of Hearts, or sometimes known as the Red Queen, um, is quite unfair and quite the tyrant. You dare defy me? Hey guys, we should help her out. That's exactly what we're gonna do, Sora. We're outsiders, so wouldn't that be muddling? Muddling! Oh yeah, <laughs> and that's against the rules. The court finds the defendant guilty as charged for the crimes of assault and attempted theft of my heart. <gasps> Off with her head! No, no! Oh please! Hold it right there! Who 
are you? How dare you interfere with my court? Excuse me, but we know who the real culprit is. Uh-huh. It's the Hartland. Anyway, she's not the one you're looking for. That's nonsense. Have you any proof? Uh... Bring me evidence of Alice's innocence. Fail and it's off with all of your heads. Gather as much or as little evidence as you please. Report back here once you're ready. Oh, shut up, you big hag. Let's talk to Alice. So, in the previous attempt at this Let's Play, I think I actually speculated um, as to whether or not there was a Sora Alice ship, because I know Sora does get shipped with some of the other uh, Disney characters. And, uh, like, I know, for example, Sora and Ariel is a shipping. I know Sora and Elsa is a shipping. And I was curious to see if Sora and Alice was actually a shipping, because they, you know, they, they do share the, um, you know, the uh, distinction of... Uh, finding themselves in other worlds different from their own, which is actually interesting that, you know, Wonderland is not Alice's home world. Um, she somehow ended up here through unknown means. We're not entirely sure. Maybe a dark corridor, perhaps. I mean, she could go through a dark corridor because, uh, to be fair, she is a princess of heart. Again, spoilers for a 20 year old game. Um, she is a princess of heart, so she has a heart of light and the darkness wouldn't be able to taint her. Um, but yeah, her and Sora do share the distinction of ending up in other worlds and stuff. So, you know, given how many characters exist in the Kingdom Hearts universe, that's actually kind of a rarity. I, I know you wouldn't think that, given that most of the main cast travels to other worlds. But, you know, it really is when you consider how small the main cast is compared to the denizens of all the worlds combined. And, um, yeah, I actually looked it up, and it turns out there is actually a following for a Sora Alice ship. It's a small following, it's not very big. Um, you know, Sora with Ariel or Sora with Elsa is actually more popular, but it does exist, so that's kind of interesting. All right, so that being said, we are gonna save real quick. And we are going to begin our search for evidence to prove Alice's innocence. Um, to help us on our quest to prove Alice's innocence is the Cheshire Cat. Um, now, a little interesting factoid that I did bring up in our first attempt at this Let's Play, and I'll bring it up again here because I think it's quite fascinating, is that in this game, it's never really made clear for sure where the cat's allegiances lie. Um, is the cat a villain? Is the cat not a villain? Um, the cat seems to be chaotic neutral sometimes, but in the Kingdom Hearts manga, which obviously is not really canon, but, um, you know, is still pretty interesting regardless. And if you haven't read the manga, go read the manga. The manga of all the Kingdom Hearts games are actually really, really funny. Um, but in the Kingdom Hearts 1 manga, the cat is straight up a villain. Um, I believe there's actually a panel where the cat actually works with the Disney villains, is in contact with the Disney villains. So, uh, yeah, in the manga, it is interesting that the Cheshire Cat is actually straight up just a villain. Kind of an interesting direction to go with the character, because I don't think it was ever stated in the movie. And, you know, I haven't actually read the Alice in Wonderland book, but I don't know... I, I don't think it was ever stated in the book that uh, the Cheshire Cat was a villain. Pretty sure the main villain in Wonderland is the Queen of Hearts or the Red Queen. Um, so yeah, it's kind of an interesting spin in the manga to make the Cheshire Cat a villain. I, I just thought that was quite interesting when I first read the the manga. All right, so three pieces of evidence are pretty easy to find, as the cat said, and uh, there's one piece of evidence that's going to be a little bit more difficult. We'll get to looking for that evidence as soon as we. Um, as soon as we take out these enemies. Alright, so we can't go this way, unfortunately. That's fine, though. We don't need to get there just yet. Most of the evidence we're going to find here in... Or at least half of the evidence we're going to find here in the Lotus Forest. 
Uh, let's go ahead and activate this Trandy Mark, though, first. Alright, so here we have one piece of evidence. And to be fair, all you really need to continue the story is one piece of evidence. We could return to the Queen's Castle right now. Uh, but she would have, I believe it's four pieces of her own evidence. Which would actually incriminate uh, Sora, Donald, and Goofy. But um, there's four pieces of evidence in total that we can get. And that's going to increase our chances um, of having a smoother process when it comes to the upcoming boss battle we'll have here in a little bit against the Queen's Card Soldiers. And also, by finding all the pieces of evidence, we do get a nice little reward from the Cheshire Cat. Ooh, we got some puppies. I believe that's our first Dalmatian, so we've collected. Alright, so there's the other piece of evidence that we need. And it is kind of interesting that all of this evidence is actually fragments of a Shadow Heartless, so I guess a Shadow Heartless got blown to bits or torn to pieces or something, um, and somebody decided to hide them around in boxes. Maybe it was the Cheshire Cat that did that? I don't know, he seems kind of like a messed up dude, especially in the manga. But our next piece of evidence is going to be located in the Bizarre Room, and we have to enter it from this point. And that is all three of the pieces of evidence that are easy to find. Now, there's one last piece of evidence, which you can see way up there on that shelf. Um, that's the one that's more difficult to get to, but we're going to get to it. And once we do, we're going to get a nice little reward from the Cheshire Cat. Alright, so the way that we actually do this, it's a little more complicated. Um, there's this flower here, and the flower is going to ask us for a potion in order to get bigger. You want to give the flower a potion. Here. So you can get back to regular size. And in doing so, you can jump on this, uh, this stump right here. And you'll notice a doorway up there at the top of that platform. That's going to take us to the other part of the bizarre room we need to get to to get the last piece of evidence. But now we have to get small again. So to get small again, we actually have to get this uh, fruit or this nut down and uh, take a bite out of it. That'll shrink us back down the size. And I need to replace that potion real quick. There we go. All right. So now we should be able to get the last piece of evidence. Now we do have to be a bit careful here because we can fall off and that'll be very annoying. We have to make sure we time this jump correctly to get this last piece of evidence. So here's hoping. There we go. Very nice. And now we'll get our reward from the Cheshire Cat. And we got the Blizzard spell. Now, normally we would get the Blizzard spell at the end of this world anyways, so don't worry about missing out on it. But it is convenient to just go ahead and get it right now because, again, we have so many fire-based enemies in this world that Blizzard is, you know, obviously going to be strong against the fire-based enemies, including the boss. And um, that's going to make Blizzard very, very useful throughout the rest of this world. All right, so we actually have a boss fight coming up, and um, I do like that I'm able to equip Dodge Roll at this point because that's going to be so useful in this fight. Um, but we're going to save again real quick. And let's present our evidence to the Queen. Now show me what you found. That's certainly a lot of evidence, but I'm still not impressed. Cards bring forth my evidence. Hmm, checking all five would only be a waste of time. Alright then. Choose the one you wish to present. 
I'll decide who's guilty based on that evidence. So this is a bit of a kangaroo court, as you can probably tell. But after all, all ways are the queen's ways in Wonderland. Alright, so four of these boxes, because we collected four pieces of evidence, is going to contain a heartless inside, which will prove our point, which will prove Alice's innocence. Uh, not that the queen really cares, honestly. And one of these boxes is going to have Donald and Goofy inside, and if Donald and Goofy are the ones that we select, they're actually going to be imprisoned for the uh, boss fight coming up against the card soldiers. We can free them from their prison, but uh, it will make things slightly more difficult, so fingers crossed that we're going to get a Heartless and not Donald and Goofy. Alright, we got lucky. And of course, the queen doesn't really care. Uh, she's pissed that uh, she's pissed that we were right and she was wrong. And now we're gonna have to settle this with the Keyblade. So we need to destroy the Crank Tower to get Alice down. And uh, something neat you can do—you can actually hit the queen. And uh, ah, that's hilarious. Look at the dumbass. Alright, so there's no point in fighting the card soldiers because they just revive after a period of time anyways. It's really the um, the crank tower you need to take down. Come on now, target the crank tower, Sora. Alright, so now we can collect some very nice money. This is why dodge roll is so useful in this fight. And I'm gonna slap the queen around just one more time for a good measure. Try and get as much of this money as possible. Because I am going to be revisiting Traverse Town after we're finished with Wonderland. I'm sorry, I just love to do that. Oh nice, we love it up, very good. Alice has gone missing. Unfortunately, we're not going to see her until the end of the game. Or near the end of the game, I should say. Oh, Alice. We barely knew you, Alice. What do you got to say? Come on, big bitch. I really don't like you, lady. Even if we were hiding something from you, I'm not going to tell you anything. Alright, so let's go ahead and save again. Now we need to uh, try and find Alice. And that stone that was blocking the path earlier is now out of our way. Don't trust this cat, Sora. This way, that way, doesn't matter. Left, right, up, down, all mixed up thanks to the shadows. Step deeper into the forest, the deserted garden. You might find shadows in the upside down room. Of course, he's talking about the bizarre room. Ah, now we have the, uh, the big boy of the Heartless showing up here, and that is the large body. I do prefer its original design in Kingdom Hearts, the original Kingdom Hearts. Um, the tan colors just really don't do it, do it for me, to be honest with you. I do prefer the more darker tones of the original color palette for large body. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, yes, we can see our enemy's HP bars because we have the scan ability, which we got from uh, Guard Armor back in the last episode. So before we go further into the uh, Lotus Forest, we're going to give this flower another potion. And that's going to allow us to push the boulder into the pond, which will somehow cause these 
toadstools to uh, raise themselves. Yeah, this is a very uh, weird world. Now, what I think is very interesting about this world is that there's actually two copies of this uh, of this particular room of the Lotus Forest that are loaded in at the same time. And you may be wondering, okay, you know, Sora, he can grow, he can shrink in the Lotus Forest and uh, also in the Bizarre Room. And, you know, how did they do all that? You know, like, what, what's the technology behind that? What's the trick behind that? Well, um, there's actually two versions of this room that are loaded in at the same time. So um, the way that it's done is that you're actually moving from one version of the room where Sora is very small to another version of this room where he's large and um, the transition is seamless because both rooms are loaded in at the same time however because of that unfortunately they weren't able to put as much detail into this room as you can tell like you know with a lot of the grass and stuff it kind of looks like it's just painted here it's you know it's it's not very detailed this tree is just you know, it looks like it's painted onto the wall. Um, not very good detail, but, you know, they had to make sacrifices in order to make the whole transition between Small Sora and Big Sora seem pretty seamless. And the same rule applies to the Bizarre Room, though. You know, they were able to add a little bit more detail in there. But, you know, it's kind of a nice trick because obviously the PS2 was, you know, uh, compared to today's gaming consoles, was not all that powerful. So, you know, they did tricks like that to kind of get around the uh, the power restrictions and I don't know when it comes to game development I find stuff like that to be very fascinating especially on old hardware where um, you know the developers were more restricted I think that's just kind of really really cool all right so I'm gonna finish taking out the heartless in this room all right so now that we've raised these uh, toadstools we can actually use them to access a uh, hidden area of the uh, Lotus Forest. Take out these Heartless real quick. I'm actually going to use some Blizzard magic on these guys. Why not? Well, you know what I just realized? I have fire. Oh, no, 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 no. We're going to have to change that real quick. Fire, you go on X. And we'll save Triangle for Thunder when we get it in the next world. Alright, let's go ahead and activate the Trinity Mark real quick. So, I could give these flowers some more items and stuff. I'm not going to bother with it right now. Uh, we will be revisiting this world when we get near to the uh, to the end game because there's actually a lot of treasure here in this world um, that I do want to pick up before we uh, wrap up the game. And so we'll be revisiting this world later. So I'm not going to bother with the rest of these flowers and getting all the items they could give us. Um, we'll do that later on, later on in the Let's Play. So now we are up here and we can get the uh, some more Dalmatian puppies. There's a lot of exploring we can do, though, right now, but there's a lot that we're going to have to save for later on in the Let's Play, because there's just some items that we can't really get right now at the moment, unfortunately. Let's see, I'm trying to think where I need to go next. I know if we go to the Tea Party Garden, that's going to progress the story, and I'm not quite ready to do that. Um, I need to get to the other areas of the Queen's Garden, though. And I think the way I do that is actually, I need to enter the bizarre room again. Damn it, Sora, stop hitting him with fire. I keep making that mistake. I'm really hoping we're able to get to level 11 before we take on the boss. How close are we? Oh, we're definitely going to be able to do it. No problem. Alright, so we need to activate a few of the uh, few of the stuff here in this room. For example, we need to activate the lanterns. That'll open up a portal there. And this one... will give us a... 
defense up, and we are actually going to go ahead and use that on Sora, because our defense is definitely lacking still. Alright. Next up, we're going to knock this teddy bear down. That's going to make the 2D book into a 3D book. There is just some interesting design choices in this world. Which, all of it works, though, because, you know, it is Wonderland, so it makes sense. It's supposed to be wacky and weird. Alright, so what can we get here? Probably nothing much. Now, I know this White Trinity Mark is going to give us a Keyblade, but we don't get White Trinity Marks until... Or we don't get access to the White Trinity Marks until near endgame, so we can't use that. We need to cast Thunder on that, and I don't really want to use any items on these flowers, so it's kind of a waste coming into this room. So, I think... Wow, okay. Need to take all these guys out. Ooh, nice. There we go. That's the level up I wanted. Alright, so where is this going to take us? Back to the Lotus Forest. Exactly where in the Lotus Forest? Oh, up here. Okay, that's useless. I don't need to go there. We're gonna get more enemies popping up? No? We good? Alright. So I think all we need to do next is return to this side of the Bizarre Room. And I'm surprised we're not getting any more enemies showing up here. Hmm... All right. Oh, there we go. All right, so with that taken care of, we can go ahead and fill up this vase. And... Again, it's going to make it into a 2D vase to a 3D vase. Just, I, I, I just wonder what Nomura was smoking when he came up with this level, to be honest with you. Alright, so that's going to give us access to another section of the Queen's Castle. and uh, Or another ledge in the Queen's Castle, I should say. Not really a section. Um, obviously, we can't get up to the top of these things on our own yet, because we don't have high jump. Um, won't get that until Monstro now. The last section we need to get to, the last ledge we need to get to, we actually need to head to the uh, Tea Party Garden at this point and continue on with the story to get there. And, oh man, I was really hoping the white mushrooms would show up. Damn it. Are they really not going to show up yet? Let me see if I can get them to show up. In case you're wondering what the white mushrooms are, if you haven't played this game, White Mushrooms are a special Heartless that are not really combative. They'd rather play games with you, specifically a game of charades, where you have to guess the spell that they want you to cast on them. And um, if you complete the White Mushrooms minigame, you will actually get some good synthesis material for Moogle synthesis later on. Um, especially what you're looking for is the Mysterious Goo, which is quite helpful when it comes to item synthesis and uh, trying to get the Ultima Weapon, which we will be doing in the post-game content. And um, they are being really stubborn. I'm going to keep trying this, see if I can get them to show up, though. Ah, here we go. All right. Finally got them to show up. All right, I don't have the Thunder spell yet. Give me something else. There we go. That's Blizzard. I've got that. Don't have that spell. Come on, don't waste my time. There is a time limit on this. If you don't do this quick enough, they will disappear on you. That's fire. Come on, one more spell, buddy. Let's get it. I don't have that. Stop being stubborn. Come on, come on. There we go. Alright, there's four in this area, so we need to be quick about this. Come on, don't waste my time. Let's go. I gotta get your brothers. There we go, I've got that spell. Oh, come on, don't be stubborn, don't be stubborn, don't be stubborn. Fire. Here we go. Alright, so we should get... Ooh, 10 tech points, nice. 
fire arts. That's not bad, but I really want mystery goo. Don't waste my time now. Come on, you stupid mushroom. You're wasting my time now. Oh, come on, you dick. There you go. That's what I need. I need you to be quick. See ya. Deep freeze. All right. Do not disappear on me, you son of a bitch. Don't you be that way, you stupid thing. Oh, you asshole. Screw you. I was too slow. Oh, well, three out of four. I mean, that's not bad. Hopefully we'll do better next time. We should get another encounter with these guys in a uh, deep jungle if everything goes right. It took me like 12 different times going in and out of that room to get them to show up. That's rather unlucky. It usually doesn't take that long. So here we have another little mini game. Um, go ahead and read this real quick. Sit down to get your presents. Okay, so sounds rather simple. You sit down, you get some prizes, but you have to be careful. Two of these chairs will actually summon the Heartless if you sit down in them. And um, it's actually the pink chairs, the big uh, plush pink chairs. So this one and this one you want to avoid. Because if you sit in these, you will summon the Heartless and you'll miss out on your rewards. And uh, this area does give some, you know, okay rewards for this point in the game. Also notice how we only have a photo of the uh, Mad Hatter and the uh, the hair. And um, I always assume that the Mad Hatter and the hair are actually in Traverse Town at this point. Because the Mad Hatter does have a shop in Traverse Town in the 2nd District. So I assume that they're working there and that's why they're absent from uh, Wonderland. But, you know, I could be wrong. That's always been my theory. All right, so let's sit in these chairs and let's avoid summoning the Heartless for now. Let's get our rewards. Let's get our merry unbirthday gifts, shall we? So get some money, get an elixir, which is always good because those things are super rare. Sit down in this chair. More money, a potion, very nice. Definitely want to get as much money as possible because I do need to buy some stuff when we get back to Traverse Town. And last chair for our rewards. I don't really need any HP ores, but I'll take that potion. And that should be it. That is all the uh, gifts that you can get for right now. So uh, you may think, okay, so let's just avoid these two chairs. Let's not even fool with them. And uh, yeah, you know, we, we, we could just move on. We don't have to fool with these chairs. But I do want to summon some Heartless so I can get some experience points. And, uh, you know, because we do have the Nightfall option on our pacing, so the more Heartless we fight, the better it's gonna be for us, the quicker we can level up. Um, I definitely wanna try and be level 12 by the time that we're done with this world. And we'll get some more money out of that too, as well. They're hiding somewhere, and the Momo Rats out grab. Want to fight the shadows? Try turning on the light. So we need to light the lanterns here. First we gotta take out these Heartless. Alrighty, that takes care of that. Ooh, big money, nice. So let's go ahead and light the lanterns, and uh, we'll be ready to take on the boss and wrap up this world. Oh, 
All right, so we need to re-enter the bizarre room from a different angle. That's going to be from the Queen's Castle, actually. And uh, this over here will give us access to the final ledge that we need to get to in the Queen's Castle. And I think this may be more Dalmatian puppies, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's a Thundara gummy. All right. So that's pretty much all the exploring that we can do for now. We'll be coming back to this world later, though, once we get towards the end of the game. So I'm going to make sure that everything is equipped as I want it to be equipped. How close are we to leveling up? We might get a level up against Trickmaster. I forget how much experience we get from Trickmaster, so we'll see. Alright, so Sora, we are going to put a potion on you. Because I don't really need that ether, to be honest. Um, did I not mail off the postcards in the last episode? Ah, uh, I don't think I did. Damn it, that's my bad. I collected them in the last episode, but I forgot to mail them off before we wrap things up. Oh! Well, that is quite annoying. Okay. Well, I'll do that before we go to Olympus. No big deal. Uh, again, sliding dash is going to be more harmful than helpful at this point. Let's see, I'll give Donald Berserk. Goofy, you've got everything that you can equip for right now, so... And still got those fire rings on, so I think that's... I think we're good to go. So let's save again. And it's time to take on the uh, boss of this world, after which we'll be able to wrap it up. Thank you, Flower. Random ass Flower for giving us some random ass prizes. I, appreci uh, I appreciate it. You may have noticed there's the bear in the book from earlier. We're actually going to deal with that here in a little bit, but first we're going to take down this boss. We've got a little bit more exploring we need to take care of before we uh, leave Wonderland, but there's no point in doing it just yet, not until we defeat the boss. Take care of the Trick Master first, and then we'll deal with the uh, tiny bit of exploration we still have to do in this world. Now, unfortunately, uh, the Trick Master's color swap in the Final Mix version is one that I'm not a fan of at all. Yes, it does match the Bizarre Room better than the black and red design of the original game, but I think it matches it too well. It just kind of blends into the background. Um, not really a big fan of this design, to be honest with you. But I am very happy we do have the scan ability equipped so we can see its HP. That's going to make this fight a little more manageable. Right now it's dazed, which is good. Gives us some uh, an opportunity for some free damage, but we just took some damage as well. That's not good. You big ugly thing, you. It is kind of funny that given that Sora shrunk down to the size of a mouse right now, if we were actually our regular size, the Trick Master would only be the size of a regular ass uh, soldier heartless. And it wouldn't really be that much of a threat. It's only this dangerous because we're so small. But so far, we're doing quite well against it, even though we are taking some damage and I am forced to use a potion at this point. And it took the chair away. That's nice. Just don't get rid of the table. All right, so now it's going for its desperation move. It's going to light its uh, juggle sticks on fire and uh, come at us with some fire-based attacks. So I think you see why I wanted to equip the fire rings. But uh, we're doing quite a bit of damage on it, though, at a pretty good pace, so it's going to get some fire attacks in on us, probably, but not as much as I thought it would. I think this attempt is actually going a little bit better than our uh, first attempt at fighting this boss and the previous attempt at this Let's Play. I gotta be careful, I gotta be very careful, I gotta be very careful... Oh, no, you don't. Get back here. There we go. 
see if I can finish it off. There we go, nice. And we did level up. Fantastic. I wanna make sure I go into Olympus at least at level 12. doorknob to get any sleep. <sighs> that, Donald was a navigation gummy. We gotta get the one from Deep Jungle before we can access new worlds. Or a new section of worlds, I should say. Yep, Alice has been kidnapped. Won't see her again till we are near the end of the game, unfortunately. So the game wants us to go back to the gummy ship, but we're not quite ready to do that just yet. Um, there is a little bit more exploration that we need to do in this world before we head back to the gummy ship. What are you doing, Sora? Don't go backwards. I know this is Wonderland, but we need to move forward. So remember this bear in this book from earlier? Yeah, so now that the 2D book is a 3D book, we can actually read it. To give us a mithril shard, and if we knock the uh, bear over to the other chair, hey, I made a rhyme there, and I rhymed again. Nice. Um, so now we can move the uh, 2D clock, which is now a 3D clock, and that'll give us a new pathway that we can travel down. And uh, we're gonna take that pathway because it's gonna lead us to another treasure chest. All right, dark matter. So there is some more treasure in this room, but uh, unfortunately we don't have the abilities to get to these treasure chests yet. We need high jump, glide, stuff like that. Um, but we'll definitely be coming back to this world. There's a lot of exploration that we need to do in this world later on in the game. This is definitely one of the worlds that are, it, it is well worth the, uh, the revisit once we get closer to the end of the game. And in fact, we'll be revisiting pretty much all of the worlds. Uh, for lots of treasures, trinity marks, Dalmatians, all that stuff, before we head into the final world, into the uh, end of the world, the final dungeon. Um, so with that being said, we're pretty much done with Wonderland. We can go ahead and, actually I'm gonna go ahead and equip this slaps, uh, slap shot ability. And I am going to go ahead and equip sliding dash now as well. Both are gonna be useful uh, from this point. Ooh, Goofy has charge. You know what, we're not going to get a lot of treasure in Olympus, so I'm going to equip charge. I think that's going to be better for Goofy at this point. And, uh, yeah. So when we come back for the next episode, we're going to start off in Traverse Town because there is some, uh, there is some shopping I need to do, and I also need to deliver these, uh, these postcards as well. I cannot believe I forgot to do that in the last episode. Totally skipped my mind. I got them, then I forgot to mail them off. Quite annoying. But uh, we'll take care of that in the next episode. So in the next episode, we are going to go through... We're going to return to Traverse Town real quick to pick up some new weapons, some new items, mail off some postcards, and then we're going to head on to Olympus. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. That's going to wrap up Wonderland. Uh, of course, you know, check out my other social media. Link down the, the uh, description box below. Uh, click that like button. Let's me know you guys want more content like this. Subscribe to this channel and click the bell for notifications. If you're on YouTube, if you're watching this on Rumble, you know what to do on Rumble. Um, you guys know what to do. You guys know the uh, the process there. And uh, yeah, stay up to date for more of uh, Let's Play Kingdom Hearts of Final Mix. I will see you guys in the next episode when we tackle Olympus Coliseum.